Hello everybody, welcome to another Magic deck deck, another Magic Arena one. I want to do another Singleton match today because Singleton has just been such an incredible blast for me. First though, I want to give a huge shout out to my wonderful sponsor, InkGaming.com. Remember, if you want to buy cool custom playmats, mouse pads, dice bags, like carry bags, all kinds of really, really awesome gaming gear, check out InkGaming.com. You can look down below, I've got a 12% uh, off promo code, and I have my own store with some channel-specific art. So there's a bunch of cool stuff that you can get from there, and it helps support me. Plus, Ink Gaming stuff is really high quality. Beyond that, of course, all the subs and patrons that are getting this early, thank you as well. We're going to be going over a, another really, really deep value deck that I have. So we've covered Single Mom before, which is all about Muldratha. And this time we're going to go Four Color Pan. So we're going to beat people to death with our big pan, which is, of course, Panharmonicon. This is the deck that made me realize that I should have Helm of the Host in our other one, Single Mom. Because, man, Helm of the Host is incredible. Incredible. This card is dumb. This deck is going to be all about us ramping up again. So green feels like it's just in such an amazing place when you're playing singleton. At least to me. It's how I want to be playing singleton. You just want to constantly ramp and get more and more value. And so that's what all of our green is going to be. It's going to be a ton of ramp. But then all the rest of our creatures are going to be things that get really awesome come into play or enter the battlefield abilities. So same thing. I'm used to saying come into play. But... We're going to have Gaunties and Ravenous Chupacabra, even Wild Wanderer to search for basic lands, Hostage Taker. Uh, we've got Path of Discovery, so whenever a creature enters the battlefield, we get to explore. That also triggers twice with Panharmonicon. It's really, really disgusting, by the way, when you get Jade Light Ranger with that and you get to explore six times. Uh, you've got Reclamation Sage to blow up artifacts and enchantments. Rejuvenator gets us lands, we've got Sailor of Means to get extra treasures and fix us for mana, and like, Exclusion Mage, so you're gonna see a ton of different things like that. Champion of Wits, you've got Glintness Crane, even Dusk Legion Zealot, Kite Sail Freebooter to remove extra cards from your opponent, Noxious Gear Hulk, Cloud Blazer. So we do have a couple of white cards too, by the way, I, I just want to mention that. We have two of them, <laughs> literally two. Just Cloud Blazer, because I, I literally just could not give up the value of Panharmonic on Cloud Blazer. It's way too good. And Chalet, Voice of Plenty. So Chalet, way too important with Helm of the Host in my mind. Being able to protect all of our stuff is so good. Chalet's won me a million games. So I really wanted to do that. You'll notice as well that this deck does not actually have any Planeswalkers. I wanted to go a little bit of a different route with it. It's really obvious in my mind to just jam as many Planeswalkers as you can in a deck. And especially when you're going like four colors, there's some really powerful ones. Teferi, the Ajani, um, oh, I can't remember it. The six drop that when you do plus two, it draws you three cards if they're permanents. Things like that. Uh, like they're just so strong. It's really, really obvious to just jam as many of them as you can into a deck. We went the opposite way, because everybody has so many Planeswalkers. We're going to hate them. We're going to do an Immortal Sun instead. So players can't activate Planeswalker loyalty abilities. There are a lot of decks that fold to that. So we're going to be trying to use Immortal Sun as our tech instead, and not run any Planeswalkers ourselves. We still have lots of cool ways to get back stuff out of our graveyard. We didn't run Muldratha. I could have. It would be a decent addition to this deck. The main reason why I didn't want it is because I knew if I put Muldrotha in here, it would just become the Muldrotha deck. It would just be the same deck as the other one that we have. So I didn't want to do that. But we have things like Many to Dominaria, we have Eldest Reborn, they're just really cool value spells. So we've got all that kind of stuff. And like I said, we've got all of those ramp cards. We've got the Elevelish Rejuvenator and Wild Wanderer like we don't have in the other deck, because these ones are the specific enter the battlefield things that we want with Helm of the Host and with Panharmonicon. But we also have our traditional stuff of Llanowar Elves, Drover of the Mighty, Elfheim, you know, Servant, uh, Grow from the Ashes, and Gift of Paradise, stuff like that. So we can just draw a, get a whole bunch of ramp going on. Spring to Mind is a fantastic card if you're running green and blue so that you can get the Aftermath. The Aftermath is fantastic in a slower format like this. Really like it. And uh, Sky Sovereign's been very, very good, by the way. Getting double D Sky Sovereign is fantastic. It kills a lot of Planeswalkers. You can wipe out most of your opponent's board the first time that it comes down if you have Panharmonicon. So really cool things like that. Panharmonicon and Helm of the Host are obviously really key to the deck, but we don't have to have them. The deck still definitely operates without them. 
And that's kind of key. We didn't want it to make it so that if we don't draw a Panharmonic on our Helm of the Host, the deck just straight folds. All of these cards are really good on their own, this own. Like, Gravenous Chupacabra is a fine card if you're not doubling it. Same with, like, Hostage Taker or Gaunty. It's just that once you get the Panharmonic on, then it becomes really ridiculous. So that's kind of the goal of the deck. And, yeah, we're going to be running this through a gauntlet. Uh, we've got, of course, by the way, let's show the lands really, really, really quickly. We've got the Memorial to Folly, Memorial to Unity, Memorial to Genius, because they're just fantastic cards. They're really, really nasty to get back out of our graveyard with things like Menion and Dominaria later on. And then we've got uh, Archer Verazka, Field of Ruin. I think that you almost always need to play Field of Ruin if you can, because there's a bunch of things like Citrus Canta and uh, Treasure Maps and all that kind of stuff that you got to hate out. So it's nice to have that in your deck if you can. And of course, we've got like the Cycle Lands and Woodland Cemetery, things like that to just help us with the fixing. Only one planes, because we've got a bunch of ways to search it, and only two white cards. All right, let's go. I've got this list down below, so if you want to take it yourself and try and run it through a singleton, then you can certainly do that. And I will uh, show the rest of our singleton matches in just a moment. <laughs> 